Welcome back to Board Game Breakdown, I'm Christopher Solomon. In this burst video, we'll be diving into the first expansion for Expeditions called Gears of Corruption. If you want more information on the base game, please click the links here. Now let's head back into the frigid Siberian Tundra to see what Gears of Corruption brings to the table. Gears is one of those expansions that gives more of the stuff players of the base game love, while also adding quite a few quality of life upgrades. First, let's touch on the new stuff, starting out with the two new mechs. Gears gives players the chance to take control of either Scarecrow or Mole, as they stomp around Siberia, vanquishing corruption, melding meteorites, and other things. Both of these mechs' abilities allow players to trash map tokens in order to gain an advantage, with Scarecrow giving players an extra action after finishing a refresh turn, and Mole letting players use a benefit even if it's covered by corruption. Not only do players get to discover two new mechs, they also get four new characters and four new companion cards. Bjorn and Zera, veterans from Scythe, join the fight with their trusty sidekicks Mox and Carr. New to the fold is Bjorn's daughter, Freya, and her links Loki, and the mysterious Balihan and their alien companion Zephon. This latter character will give players a chance to really lean into the corrupted theme, utilizing purple workers and having two totally different skills from all the other characters. The other big addition in Gears is the Corrupted Mech Module, an optional module players can add to both solo and multiplayer games. This module introduces an antagonistic mech controlled by a corrupted deck of cards. Once a player has placed their first glory token, the corrupted mech rears its ugly head, trudging around the map, taking resources and cards away from any player it gets near. But it's not all bad, as the corrupted mech acts as a new way to gain corruption, giving nearby players a chance to vanquish its cards, collecting them just like they would the normal corruption tokens. On the face of it, these changes seem like they'd be the most impactful, but even the smallest addition in Gears is welcome, especially the new player mats. A huge gripe in the base game is that the player mats had no cutout areas to hold the guile and power tokens thus allowing them to slide all over the mat if even the slightest touch took place. Gear supplies the players with replacement mats, plus two for the new mechs, so the guile, power, and action tokens have a nice place to rest. Stonemeyer also replaced the original map tokens with double-sided and larger tokens. Each is printed with a bonus on one side, giving players more incentive to explore the hexagons of Siberia. Gears also lets all players start with a gold hero worker that can act as any color as well as a starting mech card which will award a certain amount of starting guile and or power. These changes are great for players looking to get off to a faster start as they can start vanquishing and using a wider variety of cards much sooner in Gears than they ever could in Expeditions. If you are a fan of Expeditions, I don't see how you wouldn't enjoy the changes and additions from Gears of Corruption, so make sure to try it out as soon as possible. Please visit the website at BoardGameBreakdown.com for more reviews and videos, and thanks for watching.